well, we were going to start off um, with a little housekeeping by Lauren yes. uh, Miller Donnelly. Hi, everybody. <laughs> this is weird because we're trying to talk to people online while also talking to you guys in the room, too. So I apologize if I'm not really making eye contact and stuff like that. Um, so, welcome. Um, this is our first community input session for the accessible trail at um, Shasta River Preserve. So this is a webinar style Zoom meeting. So the participants online, we're not gonna see them on camera, although we have discovered we might be able to pick on them later um, when they can speak. Um, <laughs> pick on them. The meeting pick is being on. recorded. So we can okay. share this with other people, the future people that couldn't be here. So um, it's being recorded. And there's gonna be an opportunity for people online to provide feedback through the question and answer box in the Zoom window. And we're gonna try our best to make sure that both groups, both in person and online, are able to sure participate. Sure. Um, the people online, we're using a special camera that captures the whole room. And that camera is gonna be the mic for all of the speakers tonight. So you won't actually see individual boxes of people speaking like you normally would have on Zoom. We're all gonna be speaking out of the owl. Um, I heard about this. And we have people on the TNT team to facilitate questions online. Cheryl's here, any questions we can verbally um, mention them out. <laughs> Instead of having um, people having trouble like hearing, we're just going to read their questions through the Q and A box. Um, just in a minute, and I will uh, introduce the team. Um, but first, I want to pass off to Jean, the project coordinator, to give you a little bit of background on how we got to this point. Yeah, so I'm um, Jean Cooper. Um, Preserve Manager with the Nature Conservancy of Rhode Island, and I think mostly everyone knows who the Nature Conservancy is. But uh, however, there may be some folks that are unaware. We're an, a large, pretty large nonprofit environmental organization, and we work out of 50 states in the country, and we work out of well over uh, 50 countries all, all, all over the world. I say states, 50 states in the country, 50, 50 countries around the world. Um, and our mission really is to conserve land and water for people in nature. And that really is just to sum it up in a, in a nutshell. Um, uh, this is a first uh, in a series of meetings um, for the design phase of an accessible trail. And we will be going through progressive phases of the design stage over the next few months. And uh, we're reaching out for you, to you uh, in the room and on Zoom uh, for your thoughts and ideas and your concerns on anything ranging from trail placement for this uh, accessible trail, trail substrate, bench locations, details on signage, anything like that. So we would really like your input. Um, we'd like to extend our reach to as many community members as possible. So we hope that you would help by reaching out to some folks that you know, um, anyone that might benefit from a nature trail uh, where they might feel safer uh, and maybe a little bit more independent while they're out there. Um, we want to know, you know, what we can do to make this trail friendly, functional, convenient for people, um, you know, valuable. And, um, you know, we'd like to include, you know, the features we'd like to include, we want it to be, to be pleasurable and accommodating for you or someone that you know. Um, and so I think what we'll do is switch over to the first slide that we have, which is the flagship. So, so these are our, you can see up on the board or on your screen, our seven flagship preserves of the Nature Conservancy in Rhode Island. And we have over 20 preserves throughout the state that includes hundreds of miles of trail. And these are our seven flagships, flagship preserves that we put a little extra effort into maintaining the trails and you know helping visitors have a quality experience while they're out there and we also do a little more promoting to the public for these trails um, and as you can see hopefully you can see in the upper reach of the map is the Mishasic River Preserve 
um, which is approximately, well, it's in Lincoln, and that's where we are <laughs> for folks on the Zoom. Um, and then down below on the lower right is, it says Whitehead and Goosewing Beach Preserve. Well, Whitehead is our Whitehead Preserve and is also connected to our Dundry Brook Trail and Boardwalk, which is our actually Nature Conservancy in Rhode Island's first accessible trail, uh, which is a boardwalk and is very you know, wheelchair friendly, et cetera. Um, and so what I'd like to do though is hand it over to Lauren because Lauren's gonna talk a little bit about um, you know, our uh, about these this trail and basically um, what the Nature Conservancy is doing to help people feel more included in our nature preserves. Thanks, Jeannie. <laughs> so Thanks, Lauren. this is just a little background on the Nature Conservancy. Um, the mission of the Nature Conservancy is to conserve the land and waters on which all life depends. And we achieve this mission through the work of our diverse, a diverse group of staff, partners, and community. Um, two core values really speak to us um, regarding this trail and what we're trying to do. One of them is respect for the people and communities and the cultures that we serve and conduct our work. And another is a commitment to diversity so that our work benefits all people, regardless of their backgrounds or abilities. So the seven flagship preserves that we showed, um, they're conservation areas for some of the state's um, wildlife and it protects some of Rhode Island's most biodiverse ecological communities. And these flagship preserves have trails that are open to the public. Um, but more recently, our Rhode Island team has made a commitment to explore how to make their preserves more welcoming and accessible. Um, there's a deep interest in learning what are some of the boundaries that exist um, that prevent all people from enjoying our preserves. Um, Dundry Brook um, was our first accessible trail that was built over a decade ago. Um, it has 3,000 feet of wheelchair accessible boardwalk, but it serves the community of southeastern Rhode Island, and it's very remote. Um, more recently, one, one development on the block, on block Island, our Block Island team was able to purchase an all-terrain chair so that those who are less mobile can explore the rugged trails of the island. Um, they developed a system for users to borrow the chair like while they're visiting. And this is a picture of a family that's been visiting Long Island for 39 years. Dad, who's now 83 with Parkinson's, used to run the trails. Um, and the family was ecstatic to be able to have um, the use of this wheelchair um, while they were um, staying on Block Island once again. Um, he was able to borrow this chair to get him back to his happy place. So that's just kind of the trajectory that um, that we've been going um, in recent years. And I'm just going to pass it back to Jean so she can give you a little history on Mishasek. Yeah, so um, Mishasek Preserve hopefully will be our, our second project um, for accessibility uh, for our chapter in Rhode Island. And um, I'll just just briefly, very brief history of Nishasik River Preserve in case you aren't unaware. Uh, the parcels that make up the 210 acres of the Nishasik River Preserve in Lincoln were protected between 1998 and 2002 by various partners um, in funders. There were several funders as well. Um, the three miles of trails that exist, exist now were formalized um, back in, well, only two years ago, 2021. And uh, they were blazed blue and yellow and there are loops. And uh, back at that date, they were formally open to the public. Before that date, they were informally open to the public. So you could visit, um, it just wasn't advertised. It, it was very much a local destination for folks. Um, the preserve is characterized by hardwood floors of hickory and oak and maple. And it's just scattered about with a myriad of glacial boulders. So it's 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 a beautiful place um, to to wander through. It's also crisscrossed with uh, small tributaries that lead into the Meshasek River, and the Meshasek River also runs through through the preserve. Uh, we chose the the Meshasek River Preserve uh, because of because of those beautiful natural features, and and there's much more than that. And uh, it's it. We wanted people to be able to experience that 
that the beauty of that place and enjoy, you know, a sense of um, environment in a serene location. And it's fairly serene. It's it's it can be a very beautiful place to be inside. Um, and we also chose it because of its close proximity to the Greater Providence area and to other more densely populated urban centers that will hopefully make it easier for more people to access this preserve. We also chose um, chose because uh, you know it it has a greater potential uh, for bus routes to come close to the area uh, as opposed to some of our other preserves that we own and manage. Um, and uh, another reason, um, uh, fairly recently back in 2021, when we, the reserve was officially opened up, uh, we created a new parking area. So that will help us provide more ample parking and the creation of a van drop-off zone. So those are some of the reasons why, you know, we chose this reserve. Um, uh, I guess with that, we'll, you know, I think we're ready to bring it over to um, Forsley Witten Group. Uh, who is uh, our part engineering partner in this project, and I'll let them introduce themselves. So thank you. Sure. Thanks, Jean. Um, my name is Brian Kucher. I'm associate principal of Hosey Witten Group and registered landscape architect and civil engineer. Uh, Ellen Diggers, uh, landscape architect of Hosey Witten Group. And I just want to start by thanking everyone for coming out and everyone who's participated online because uh, it is important to get public input and feedback and I have to say that we are very excited to be working with the Nature Conservancy. Um, their mission and values um, match very nicely with our firm, which we are a mission-driven mission uh, environmental design firm that we're really focused on protection, preservation, conservation, and restoration of our most uh, precious and natural resources, which obviously this site is one of them. If you've been to the site, it's uh, spectacular. Um, it really feels like you're in uh, a much different environment than from the, its surroundings. And I think what they're trying to do out there, and if you look at some of the projects uh, like the Block Island and um, the Dundry Brook, trying to make these places more accessible for, for people um, in general and, and for those who might not be able to traverse the trails, I think is a very important mission as well. So again, I just wanna thank everyone for coming out and. Um, this is a, a, an important project and we're glad you guys are all participating. Uh, so having said that, I think I just wanna go over really briefly what our presentation and our uh, scope is to tonight. Um, we started with information gathering and site analysis. And what that entails is visiting the site, uh, collecting data, both Ellen and myself have been on the site. Ellen had a, spent a whole second day out there with Fawzi Witten staff collecting um, data and looking at potential um, trail routes for uh, greater accessibility. Um, we also perform a GIS desktop analysis. So we're looking at um, natural resources, um, soil conditions, other things that we can uh, gather from through GIS. So in, with the combination of the desktop analysis and then that site analysis, we're able to start to get a much better feel for the site and start to identify the potential um, or the, the best potential path locations. And I should have mentioned too that um, the Nature Conservancy did a great job identifying two potential options. So we're looking at both of those and seeing if one's better than the other, or perhaps maybe they're both viable um, accessible routes that could be um, eventually constructed to improve that accessibility. So tonight's our first community meeting. Um, and the agenda is what we're trying to do is go over and my colleague Ellen is going to go through very uh, thoroughly with what we've done and what we've learned. Um, we're also looking for your input if we've missed something um, based upon your information or knowledge of the site or things you think we should be looking at. That's kind of the information we're hoping to collect to again, to sort of complete this site analysis. Uh, the next item would be, what do you think about what we're doing? Do you have any concerns? Do you think there's other opportunities we should be looking at. We have a little um, interactive exercise. We're going to be asking you to put your hands up or give us a thumbs up and thumbs down on some of the images that we show you. And then lastly, we'll just wrap it all up and kind of give you the schedule looking forward, which is shown here. Um, and then also there's a, a survey that if you haven't filled it out, you can uh, provide additional information online. So I think having said that, I'm going to turn it over to Ellen. Okay, so I'm just going to go over some of the stuff we've been 
When we're looking at learning so far, um, one of the main things that we're using around this is um, to provide accessibility into the woods that people can experience nature. And that could mean a few different things for what we're aiming for. So as we're going through this project, we're trying to provide that accessible path or moment or things to the best extent possible while still keeping the natural experience. So there's levels of accessibility like you see here, where we typically find in more of an urban environment and then all the way to the more natural environment that would make sense for the woods. So we're, so we're trying to, buy, so as we're going through all of these, we're gonna be seeing what level we can hit to the best extent practical while keeping it a natural environment. So the map we've already looked at on the Shotik uh, River Preserve, um, the main area that we're focusing on is this area right in here. So if you've been to the site, you've probably come to the parking lot off of Sherman Ave and then taken the blue trail in where there's that giant boulder and then taken off on one of the loop trails from there. Um, as Jean mentioned and others, it's pretty um, obvious even from the larger aerial, this large swath of trees and canopy that really makes it unique to a lot of the surrounding area that's a little bit more carved up. So we're gonna be focusing on this area right here. And then we're also changing direction just to, to orient you a little bit. So for it's if you kind of turned your head to the left and so now we're, we're looking at the parking lot in that lower area um, with north coming to the right. Um, this orange dashed line are the existing trails. This uh, light blue line is the Nishasik River coming through a little bit bigger. And then some of the smaller tributaries um, draining in and connecting to the, the Nishasik River. Um, the black is just the property line. Um, and this darker green is the canopy for the most part. So that oak hickory uh, under and with some understory and then a section in the middle that kind of opens up into more of a field um, and then uh, the parking space. So what we've done is we've taken the base map and we've started to look at some of the, um, I'd like to say constraints and opportunities for all of these things. But um, so one of the factors we'll be looking at is wetlands and some of, so for this area, that's a lot lower. And as you could see from all the, uh, rivers coming through here, it's quite a bit wet. So this will be a consideration as we're looking at accessibility, um, one, to make sure we're not disturbing resources that much, uh, but also um, what materials we could be using for the top if we have to cross some of these areas that um, do get a little bit more wet um, in some locations where we're looking at crossing the streams, uh, what are we gonna be using to do that? Um, to go along with that on the other side is soils. So, I know this is um, quite a few dashed lines, but basically it tends to line up with the wetlands with there being a lot more um, hydric soils where those are located, even though they're not flagged yet. And then if you've been out there, these have all come up as very extremely stony and rocky, which it can be pretty obvious from the site as well. Um, and then the floodplain. So this light blue is the wetland layer that we were just looking at. And then this darker blue, the lines here is the floodplain. And then this, the one that's filled in is the floodway. So the major entrance into the site from the parking lot comes right over the Meshawsik River, which is a great spot. It's gorgeous. You go down, we'll have more pictures to go through it, but it's also gonna be, um, more of a constraint a little bit for how we get an accessible path across that in consideration for this major floodway that's coming through. So we haven't worked through it all, but we've started to look at what that means for that crossing. So here's the parking lot and the trail coming through. Um, for most of this, we're staying at a higher level, like a GIS kind of layer. But for this, because it's there's so much specifics, we're kept doing a, a hydrology analysis to look at what storm uh, elevations are coming through here during different scenarios to make sure that whatever we're proposing isn't going to get washed out with the next storm and it's going to be appropriate. Um, with that, so we zoom back out, it's a little lighter, but the parking lot is here and the orange trails are here as well. We're looking at the grades and topography. So with the smaller gray lines being contours, um, you can see where they space out mainly where the wetlands works, it's this lower floodplain area, and then where some of the um, knolls and hills start to arrive, where there's red over the orange, where we're over 5%, 
slope, which is can be an indicator for accessibility. So um, it'll be a balance between when we stay lower and flat, it'll be wetter and you'll be dealing with water, but we want to make sure it's accessible so we can't go up to many of the hills. So we'll be um, looking at balancing those things as we're going through too. And then as we mentioned, there's so many great features out here. So uh, even within this lower area, there's a lot of unique spots where we'll go through some of the pictures that um, just make them great moments to be out in the woods and are all very unique, um, just between the different boulders and the dam and the, the resource with the river and some other wetlands. It's, it's um, within this little lower area, you kind of experience a variety of different things as you're going through. So besides just accessibility, we wanna make sure people enjoy their experience while they're out here. And that relies into the options that uh, Brian had mentioned, how we started to, um, TNC had identified, and we've been walking out in the field for potential locations um, where um, these trails could go. Uh, it's still open for interpretation. So if you've been here not well and know there's other opportunities, we'd like to hear more. Um, so just to do a kind of walking tour of the site, uh, see the pictures in the upper left corner is the map. So the orange is those existing trails still. You can see the river here. And right now I have a parking lot circle. So um, as a part of the parking lot currently, it, there's actually quite a bit of space, quite a few um, Vehicles can fit in here, but it is all of this stone dust. You can see where areas puddle. Um, and then even to get onto the trail, there's a little bit up and it's pretty far down. So one of the first things is going to be making sure that from the parking lot, there's uh, accessible spots and then grades and things that are comfortable for people to get out there. And some of that could even include um, how that people know how to get to the trail and feel comfortable going to it as well. But currently existing, it's all the um, Kind of stone, stone dust uh, parking. Can we uh, let's wait until the end, which will be very soon, or, or the discussion part will be very soon. So I just have a few pictures to go through, and then we could just come right back to this if that makes that easier. Uh, yeah. Um, just as you get further into the site, if you've been out here, there's the stone. Um, stone dam wall that uh, has a break in the middle of it um, where you cross the river over some culverts. Being out on site, it's different depending on what time of year you go. In the winter, you can see it so much more. In the summer, this is the area where you can sell. There's been a lot more disturbance. There's a lot more vegetation that comes up. Um, the canopy is open from the river, so it's uh, sometimes a little uh, filled in depending how quickly, it, how much rain we've gotten even. Um, and then in that same area, just another view at the wall. And then you can see from here, this is the existing path coming across where there's a few culverts here. And because of how low it is, one of the current constraints that we've talked about is that it floods, that this area gets totally covered in water, which makes it hard to be a bit of a cross or impossible. Hopefully not trying to wade through it. Um, and then moving further into the site, some of those giant boulders that we're talking about mostly Glacial deposits, um, but still very interesting. So at the major and trail intersections, some very large balanced boulders. And then even as you get in a little bit further, uh, an area that's even currently being maintained is a seating area. There's a nice little node in there that's mostly mossy. Um, and then moving out past that, the area that's considered meadow kind of makes a completely distinct um, plant palette and environment than you're experiencing anywhere else. So even in this location, it kind of opens back up. There's a bunch of milkweed and different vegetation here. And then soon after you kind of are back to that um, closed in canopy that uh, it's kind of drastic. It's, it's pretty great experience for there. Uh, and then the streams. So in a few of these locations out to this direction or even the other, we're looking at some of these streams where we would have to have crossings in some locations or if these could be kind of like a focal endpoint for a destination to come out to from an accessible trail and then come back if we aren't in the loop. Um, then existing on some of the trails is um, some erosion. So off of those hills that we were looking at before, currently a lot of water um, accumulates in some of the trails that starts to carve out different patterns coming down. 
um, which will have to be looked at when we are putting them in the class to make sure that doesn't start to happen. And then out, if we go out the other way, more interesting boulders. We had a conversation out there saying this one looks a little bit like a turtle. I keep seeing T-Rex in it, but it's it's large. So even from this picture, you can't see it as well. But um, another like unique feature that as you're coming back this way um, uh, makes a distinct spot in the site, even right across from where there is a wetland, potentially a vernal pool area that's very um, unique, even from the other locations within the site that we've seen. And then as you get out, we're looking at um, some of the trail conditions also. So here, as you've noted, but then in other spots too, there's a lot of spots where boulders are pushing up or where we do have water sitting where we will have to cross in different spots. So there'll be some of that detail within with those options as well. And then if we're going out the other way, another good ending spot would be a view out over the river as well. So it's a great spot that you could get to, an area to sit down and enjoy, and then come back afterwards that can be accessible. Um, so just going back to like all those layers for things that we were looking at, including those points of interest that we, we were just discussing, is that we're, we're taking all of these together and then helping that determine um, what will be the best options for these trails to make it an enjoyable experience, make sure people feel immersed, and then um, that the path is accessible when possible. So now, so. <laughs> um, yeah, so we so the next part is because we, um, this is the information gathering stage, that's kind of the furthest we've taken things. It's mostly, mostly the analysis, some of it, and we really want to hear from um, you guys about the site. Uh, we have a few specific prompts, but if there was something um, that you'd wanted to bring up earlier, I could go back to the parking as well area. Um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, the parking area, I know Doug Vaughn, maybe uh, the person that yeah. was a golf course, yes. helped make that parking spot, but a lot of golf is parked there because it's close to the pub, clubhouse. So when I went there, I just parked in the golf club parking lot. I no wouldn't say anything about it. People should be aware that that parking lot's full because they could be dealt with just to park. So, the park in other lot. words, just to let them know that there is other parking yeah. that they, they're allowed to go to. Yeah, like you only want to say, lot. hey, keep your golfers out of that lot. Yeah. It's only for like, thanks, <laughs> thanks for making it. <laughs> so, I mean, no one said anything to me to park in the other lot. So. Yeah, it's, it's a shared parking area. Uh, and that was the stipulation when it was built. Mm -hmm. So those kind of conditions that it was built. So um, one of the problems uh, we had was were people parking in front of the trailhead there. So we were thinking of putting a sign there. Um, but I think if we, I don't know, maybe it's my impression that if um, a trail goes in, we have an accessible trail that goes in and we have more signage and we have uh, a place where there's a van drop-off zone, um, hopefully, or we can maybe put some signage out to encourage people to park in the lower lot if they're from the golf course. I'm, yeah, I'm I think really it's quite... just in the clubhouse itself. Oh, people, people that could be an idea. That, then don't know. That's an idea. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll have to sort of feel that out yeah, that's as a we great go guy along. For... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. I know Cheryl Wheatla, our preserve manager, um, has um, communicated a lot with Doug. Yeah. Did anyone go out there after we left four inches of rain and all the little streams and tumbling and everything? Tim? Out and... Tim and I. Yeah, just to see what it looked like. Oh, so I don't know what it was like, but it does flood. So that, yes, it it's does. Um, so so yeah. that, that might happen again. So we could, we could take that into consideration. Definitely. And that's yeah. part of. Um, yeah, that's part of. So we are looking Jobby. at, as, as, <laughs> as Ellen mentioned, yeah. we're doing, you know, yeah. um, hydrology modeling and we're looking at um, how that rises based upon different storm events. And as she mentioned, however we decide to cross that, we're gonna have to take that into consideration. Um, and it, sh it was shown on the plan too. We do have the floodway shown. Um, if you can kind of highlight that here. That, yeah, um, like so yeah, blue. so that blue zone is the floodway. The blue line is is the um, flood plain. So right. that's for larger storm events. That's all areas that is are prone to flooding. But our biggest concern is the floodway right now because the fact that it's a form of dam and you also get flooding um, 
partially due to the culvert. The culvert's a pinch point, and it, it's actually not even flowing full because it has some debris and sediment over time. Um, so there's those factors, but we're considering all of that. I just had one quick clarification. I heard something in the parking lot. So it's a shared, so golfers can park there. They are allowed to. And yes. trail users can also park on the golf course? Or... Yes. Okay. Cheryl, am I correct? Say that again. I just... The hikers, can the hikers park in the golf club parking lot? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so it's okay. just under the... an agreement with the um, golf court where either trail users or okay. using the golf court park. That's great. Yeah, it's like you're saying. So people know because the one I think I know what you're talking about the golf course one feels like removed. It's a while yeah, time. yeah. You're like right. it feels. It does feel like oh, I'm I'm not supposed to go there. So that's what's yeah, like, we did it, but we didn't know. I mean, we weren't oh, sure didn't. what, but it was full, cool. and so we just used the other one, the golf. What we thought was going for the golf course. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Nobody said anything. In there. But it, it, we weren't sure. Yeah. Yeah. So signage, signage would help. Yeah. Can Thank I ask you. one more question on the parking too? How often do you see? You seem to have seen it full. How often is like, it? Like on weekends where it's nice out and there's a lot of people in the open. I think that would be like a Thursday night. They have like a Thursday night golf. Yeah. Okay. Evenings and weekends. Yeah. Yeah. No, not not currently. That's what that, that's our plan. Yes. Uh, yep. Um, so we were saying so the the goal and plan with this was at least one van accessible. If it makes sense for more, or like we haven't designed out the parking lot, or like what that is exactly. But yes, definitely some type of accessibility. Definitely accessibility. Then and then we were talking about with um, the river being such a feature, a great feature, like the. the um, a standard of accessibility to get to make that connection, even especially with being so close. Um, it's something we had talked about, so a lot of it still needs to be designed quite yeah, a bit too. Right. So, uh, if that is something important, then that was great to hear to, to be included in that also. Should we also just suggest like something that we had looked at when we were there was that the pathway as it exists now is actually too steep. So we actually explore whether or not to flip where the access is, to flip the access to the other side of the parking. Um, and that way, the golfers can fill up the closest spots to the golf place, and then the trail users will be on the other side. I mean, there's limited parking, but we did look at the possibility of kind of switching where people access, mainly because of the steepness of that direction. So that's why you should come back to the next meeting because you're going to see those different options. Yeah. Um, so just to go through some of this, um, it'd be great to hear what some of you like about the preserve or, or what's um, kind of why do you go there even if you've been there. I, I like the diversity of the terrain. You know, I like all the rocks <laughs> and big blocks. <laughs> and, uh, and that yeah, there's just so much diversity to it. I mean, you have the river, you have rocks, you have, you know, tr trees, and there's all just, you know, it's not just a lot of places you go, which is, they're fine. They're outdoors, they're beautiful, whatever. But you, you're going through one forest where everything's pretty much the same. And, you know, I was really, I was really stunned by, um, yeah, just the different things that were there that you don't see in other places. That was I think that's one of the reasons why we wanted part of the trail, hopefully, to go through a section of the clearing. Yeah. And Cheryl, do you remember how that clearing came to be in there where the milkweed is? And um, we may have to do some invasive control. <laughs> so I was looking at some historic photos, and it looks like it used to be a stockpile area. Like maybe a stockpile area? Like no? at least it had looked like a road from there, the part that we walk on. And that, like, it could have been cleared. So, like, when it was a quarry, but that, that at least from some of the historic photos. So, nature sort of reclaimed it, and it's it's growing. And, and yeah. so, we we may have to maintain that area to keep it, um, you know, uh, that type of habitat. We have such great wildlife. Um, I live up on West Butterfly Way, okay. and if you go through the woods, I come out at the golf course. Yeah. And oh, um, okay. but we had a bobcat 
last spring, mm -hmm. we have had litters of fox, red fox. Um, so just the animals, even maybe not face to face with the fox. <laughs> <laughs> I look through the window. Um, but we do, and and that's one of the nice features. So many deer. I don't know how good they are <laughs> at this point. They eat everything, but um, that's what I am. I mean, thinking about it as an accessible place, I mean, a lot of it is just real steep, and, and a lot of that is just never going to be really probably appropriate for accessible trail. But that river, you know, you've got a flat there, and so it seems like there ought to be some way to design around that to be able to use those lower spots. I mean, you know, I mean, we'll, I mean I've gone north over there, but um, I don't know how far you can follow along onto the south of it along, along the, you know, the river. But that, you know, the, where, where you've got the, um, along that northern section where you've got the river there and, and flat, that would be, you know, it seems like a real good place for the boardwalk or some kind of thing. That mm -hmm. would take, you know, that would cover, you know, cover you because you got to, you know, you get a bridge all the way to the stream. And, and, you know, they're just big enough that you don't want people having to jump over. You know, oh, even for walkers, right. Right. Even yeah. for walkers right. you know, who are, who are not having accessibility issues, it's just, you know, it's just enough that if you, if you don't bridge them, um, people are going to make mud. Yeah. You know, and the first rule of places like this is don't make mud. Mm -hmm. Is anyone familiar with um, in Arono, Maine, the Bob Boardwalk? And yeah. it's exactly what you're talking about. Hmm. It's phenomenal. It's with the Maine Land Trust and University of Maine. And it's called, it's a one mile accessible loop. Um, it has every 200 feet, it has benches and it's over the box. So they're dealing with the water issue. Mm -hmm. And um, we actually went there last year, and it was phenomenal. It, it's really something to see how they built it. And I have been to the Dundery. Yes, Dundery Brook Trail. Yeah, and, to, yeah. 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 and I have accessibility issues. So I did try to walk here, and I did get to the seating, but I couldn't go any further to, between the roots and, and rocks Watch, and what yeah. have you. Yeah. Um, it was really an issue for me. I, I crossed the uh, Orono Bog um, before they built the board, boardwalk because we went in the middle of winter when it was frozen. <laughs> but that was the only way you used to cross it back. <laughs> yeah, right. It freezes right up. It's, yeah. it's beautiful. No, it's, yeah. You can see it right from the interstate. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like just to get north of Orono. Yeah. You, you go right through it. <laughs> <laughs> It's worth a drive. It is, like it is, it really is. Yeah. Um, and if there are some yeah. uh, responses online as well. Yeah, so I've got a question here. Um, is there a way the trail might allow for hikers to engage with or enter directly into the water? For example, an opportunity to get up close and personal with it, not just cross over it. So water access is the question. I. It's not really part of That's, our scope of this project, but I, I would probably defer to you. All. I think you'd rather define it succinctly. Yep. <laughs> it's basically not the scope of our project to provide access to the water itself. Um, it's our, our goal is to provide a place for people to take it in and visit, um, not necessarily, you know, jump in or, or put a boat in or anything like that. So it's just basically out of the scope of this project. The river so. in that stretch is, is small enough. You're not going to be putting the boat it, in there. Exactly. Right. Right. But um, we did fish monitoring up there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people get in the river, but it's like For it's slippery. And, um, you know, I mean, I can see on a summer day there's places where people might want to sit in the water, but it's like it's not deep enough to swim or anything. Yeah, but um, I I think that we probably wouldn't encourage people no, to do that just to, to you know, disturbing the habitat and um, yeah, you know, in the stream bed that type of thing. So, um, were there anything else?
Um, Have you anything, anything else from what you like about it? No, okay. there's, but there's another program, Wild Wild Adventures, out of Northampton, Mass. And they um, deal with accessibility. In fact, they came here um, to the bike path off Front Street, and they bring trikes. And if the person can't do the, the trike for the handicap, mm -hmm. they, there's um, actually a trike that someone who's healthier can pedal and take them on the path. And they're, they're a wonderful program. They work with veterans and they work with um, brain injured people and things such as that and the handicap. But I haven't seen them come back to Rhode Island. They did a couple of years ago. And it was about, what was it called? It's Outlaw. called All, All Out Adventures. Adventures. All, All and Out. they're in North Outlaw. Northampton, okay. Outlaw. Uh, Mass. Great. Mm -hmm. But uh, a trick would be great. Like, I know the only place I know where there's a trike, I think it's Holt State Park. So it's a type of uh, all-terrain yeah. chair. I, I, I'm not really familiar with that. Yeah, it's a it's a three-wheel that you sit down in. And um, if you go on the All Out Adventure website, you'll see them. Okay. Yeah, yeah now they're doing yeah. a lot of electric. You, you can pedal, but if you get high, you can go electric. Right, and I heard that there's... Um, federal funds to get the electric, which yeah. I was surprised. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My niece told me about it. No, we can take. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Sure. Um, we did a program at our building in, at Sigma Landing with uh, VIP, visually impaired. So they came and they like to, we have a little trail system in our uh, place. So they come with a handler and the handler just explains to them as they're walking, which off the route on the left or right, oh. the stones and and then they they um put a mask on us and we had to walk around the trails like we couldn't see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it was a pretty cool thing. So someone with vision can actually find out what it's like to not have vision and they to listen to someone else explain where to go and how to step. That's a good idea. But they would be interested in, in going to this place. Yeah. Right. VIP. Visually impaired. Yeah. Yeah. Um what's the way did I talk to this? All right, maybe I might be able to get back in touch with you on that. I can give you yeah. her email address. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah. Because you can get their input. Yeah, for sure. Um, thinking about like boardwalks, um, and and then these trikes, um, the 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 you know the boardwalks are great for a wheelchair and stuff. They're also used by people who are walking, right. and you just wonder about how wide you have to build them. So that you can get a trike That's down true. and having people walk by and go in the other direction or being passed by. So and and you know, with one of those things, the wider you build it, the harder it is to sight. You know, the narrower it is, the yep. easier it is to, to yep. figure out and, what kind of route without mm -hmm. having to take out a lot of trees. So so that's always a balancing act. And, and you know, I, I assume that there, that there's some pretty standard ways of dealing with that. And, and you don't currently allow mountain bikes, correct? Correct. Yeah, so mountain bikes aren't currently allowed. So. Yeah. How about other things about the site? Anyone else visited the site, things they like? Anything that we mentioned that we might have missed that you know of that this is a, it's a good location or any other comments relative? Uh, question is, is how far, how long is that flat? I can be able to build on. I don't know how long it is. I've walked it, but I not real long, but I don't know how long it's in generally in here. Um well, I guess like a mile there and back. But I, I honestly don't have the what, yeah, yeah, and and, and they've already identified these sort of as I will mention these these two potential those okay. the dark yellow spot the, or the um, big yellow the red the, uh, the red dashed is potential options orange was uh, existing trail and the yellow is honestly where uh, the existing is above a certain percentage in some areas it's steep. yeah where it gets a little bit steeper so the the red dashed are areas we're looking at as options for some of these trails right now uh, the, orange is yeah the yeah existing. and when we walked so tnc went out and sort of did their homework and came up with a couple options on our site visit. We walked them. Um, they seem to be great locations. I think they did a good, a good job. 
locating and really for the accessibility, I think you've hit on it. It's, it's all about matching the slope and the grades with, because what we don't want to do is have to alter the land to try to make that more accessible. So we're looking to stay in the flattest areas, but um, as you mentioned earlier, the diversity is a real asset. So we want to make sure that we're also providing them access to the diverse pieces of um, the park. So our scope is really to identify one of the options, but we've talked about maybe if they're both suitable, maybe one's a first phase and then you can also add a, a second phase. But I think the intent is to construct one. Yes. Right. Okay. That's currently what's funded. So we'll be selecting one, but we went out there and we're like, these are both great. I don't, you know, maybe if we can make both of them work, that might be phase two. So, so I obviously just got here. So where are you planning to start it in, near the golf course? So uh because that I walked back there quite a bit. We live we abut the woods. So I mean I've walked that whole thing. I've done it in snowshoes at midnight. So <laughs> you know very well. Um, so we we are looking at starting at that parking lot near the golf course. Yeah, so that's pretty level if you go and you take a right and you follow the river so right here uh so this is the parking lot yeah, yeah and where you come down where it's like red and orange right yeah. now and then the right you're talking about yeah heading up the river we're also looking out the other way so i know when you go down the existing path and you head up you start hitting um, topography but yeah. if um there's that area where there's the big boulder and black yeah. and seeding yeah. If yep. you take a left there and then go through kind of that open area yep. and then eventually connect back after it comes off of the um, trail. Yeah, uh, if you stay to the left, it'll be kind of flat. And you'll yeah. go and be like a big mound. And if you stay to the left, is you'll, you'll come to a stream, across the stream. Yep. And that's all pretty. That, that's easy. kind of where, where I, th it, yeah, I think we're probably, probably thinking the same know. thing. So. Just because you arrived late and we're definitely happy that you showed up, especially if you're snowshoeing out there at midnight. Yeah. <laughs> you can have a lot of information, maybe. Um, but you can join me. <laughs> I actually might do that. I'm a little far. Uh, but you know, if you're gonna invite yeah, me. Yeah, be snow to do it though. I'll I'll I'll, I'll bring the beer. Um <laughs> we have the fire pit. <laughs> I'm sold. I'm sold for a winter hike. Um, but just so you understand, tonight we're looking at we haven't come up with any, we're not presenting concepts yet. So okay. I'm saying that because I want to make sure you attend the next meeting because that's when we'll get into um, some okay. of the locations and I think your information would be would be valuable. Um, we're looking, we kind of went through our site analysis, what we looked at, and then we're looking for any additional input to see if we've missed things. Um, right now, we were just talking about what people like about the site. I think we'd also want to know if there's something you don't like, you kind of mentioned the steep trails that are going to, from an ADA accessibility standpoint, you mentioned the routes um, could be problematic. So, you know, any information like that, when routes are a problem, the, steep slopes. Yes, seating, seating, I know down in Woodport at the, uh, the two that yeah. we, we wanted to do, I think it's a mile and a half, but I had to turn around because yeah. there were no, no, no seating. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. That's definitely, we definitely plan to incorporate those. We would love to have your input on those as well, where they are, what kinds, and I, we're, we will go into that. I think they're going to go into that later yeah. tonight, too. And what about safety when you're out there? You've been out there at midnight, besides maybe animals, is there any safety concerns? Or? years ago we had some kids on our uh, dirt bikes <laughs> well that we we've, we've definitely seen evidence Have of that seen right? it? yeah, yeah. Not it's only still lot, happening but, um, it was it was yeah. maybe four or five years ago but i think that child has moved on to college or something yeah, <laughs> it tends to be local <laughs> <for sure. laughs> as far as safety you know i mean i've seen fisher cats um there are coyotes, um, but they're not going to really, unless they're rabid. I mean, there's about 500 deer, you know, back there, <laughs> at least. Um, but as far as walking and like hazardous, it depends where you go. Like if you continue on along the river, yeah, then it gets pretty steep. I mean, you're going through pretty rough terrain. Um, you know, so that would be a hindrance to somebody that has, you know, a disability. 
Um, but if you stay in those flat areas, it's not really that I would say that's, you know, not walkable in, in a safe, safe way. Mm -hmm. okay. um, yep. Is the maximum incline like 9%? Is that the maximum right. so, so that has to do with that, like balancing it. So for forest trails, there is a higher percentage like that um, for like the, the like more urban uh, ADA, that's typically 5%. I think we just want to try and keep it um, uh, as low and close to that as possible. Um, so like, yeah, because yeah. 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 there's okay. like there's different like levels of the accessibility. We want someone with a wheelchair to be able to come up to the spot. Yeah. So that would be keeping it closer to that. But there are situations where it's trails that is are considered accessible that have a higher percentage like that sometimes, um, depending what standard you're kind of trying to reach with it. Like say that's a black diamond trail and <laughs> <laughs> put that with the black diamond. I think we're going for green circle. Yeah, <laughs> definitely going for green circle. Yeah. The other thing too with going over five percent, trying to create an ADA surface, then you start to get into erosion and maintenance issues can become challenging as well. Because again, we're looking to preserve and protect, not so we don't want to do things that are going to become either a maintenance problem. For TNC or to cause sedimentation or other things that will start to um, cause harm, really, you know, to degradate the, the landscape. So that's the other uh, balancing act. And I think the trails we walk are all well below five. So I, when we walk, it's mostly, I'd probably say, you know, like the three to four percent. Yeah, there's some spots yeah. you're going to be looking at closer, so it'll all be, yeah, yeah it'll change the two. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I'm saying that the two routes that we, uh, or that TNC, um, Preliminary the only, identified as possible paths. The only thing that you may, there might be a couple of places where they don't have bridges that you be looking at. Right. Yeah, so we, we are looking at locations where we'll have to be crossing the river for yeah. the few spots. Um, so is there anything that anyone else has that they don't like about the preserve? That's okay. No. <laughs> it's an awesome place. Yeah. Um, as far as the project and like what we're going to be doing, not just the preserve, are there any concerns that you have for the for what we are looking at even or potentially going to be frozen? How much do you want to whatever you're putting in or So for um the boardwalk, she would we would well for everything we would want to try to keep minimal disturbance to the best extent practical in part. Um because of all the great trees that are out there um, to minimize the amount of chance for invasives to come in. But also there's a lot of boulders. <laughs> um, but uh, I think it'll be a spot by spot. For the most part, we want to fill if there's a location. So if we're trying to get the right slope, our goal is to like fill out in locations to get that even plane. Um, for boardwalk, we would need footers in some of those spots. And then for the larger river crossing here, and depending on what level we need to get to with a crossing, it might be a little more expensive because we're trying to stay out of like a certain flooding zone. So that might be a little different than if we have like a wet spot out here where we could do like a much smaller scale kind of a boardwalk crossing. So the goal would be to minimize disturbance and digging. Um, but uh, there might be some situations where we still have to. Yeah, you're going to have to do something to, to foot a bridge going over the river. Yeah. So, yeah, so we've looked at this again, haven't made any decisions yet, but it could be anything to a more prefabricated pedestrian type bridge that would have a larger span, that a longer, you know, a structural beam carrying capacity, or like helical piles. And we have done boardwalks where we to minimize disturbance or when it's a challenging site, you can use the boardwalk. You build the boardwalk as you go and you use the boardwalk to put in your helical piles. So we've done that too. Where they can, again, have to, the, the downside of that is you have to build a little more beefy boardwalk because you're putting that, but it's a pretty small piece of equipment. So we're going to look at those options. But I think the goal is to minimize that disturbance as much as possible. How much boardwalk are we talking about? As in relative, you know, to so like the whole trail will be boardwalk. Uh, we don't know. We don't know the extent. It'll so um, 
for the most part, it would be nice to um, minimize the amount for maintenance and disturbance. However, we have a lot of constraints like um, potential wetlands. Um, there's areas where there are extensive boulders where it makes sense to lift it above those areas um, just to get like a, a flat area um, and then crossing the streams too. So it's going to be be a that, combination. Yeah, yeah be a combination. Be a combination of the, yeah. the most significant board, like the, that you would think of as a boardwalk would be to get across the river, right? That would and then be the rest of it would be like stone, crushed stone. Or... Yeah, it could be, yeah, like a dense grade material because it has to, to try to make it as, and that's typically been what they, they're they using for ADA trails. Yeah. Um, again, it's not, you, uh, earlier we talked about, it's not um, urban ADA accessibility guidelines that's much more rigid what that surface can be. It's a mile street surface, so there's some flexibility, but it's typically, a dense grade material, which that means it's like it's crushed stone and some fines right. to bind. Yeah. Yep, and it binds it together. That's why I was saying you don't want to get your slopes too steep because then that can be a source of erosion. Yep. Yep. So, <coughs> is there any? I, this is just a thought because I saw it at a couple of beaches this summer. Is there any role for that kind of that blue um, mesh? Kind of big, yeah, I just wondered if that was. I mean, if it's not, I've never seen it in the woods, but so I think that, that mesh typically um, holds together like a material that's um, moving quite a bit. We don't really have those soil conditions here for yeah. a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, and then also, I think that's more seasonal, it's like, temporary. Yeah, you yeah. Don't yeah. Like Take a month. We, actually, we actually used that on a project in, in Boston that we had to put a temporary bike path in because we were blocking the bike path to do the work. So we put that that blue mesh down, right? Because yeah. it's it basically it distributes load, so it makes it a stable surface, so you could ride a bike across it. Yeah, yeah. But it's even like beaches as they get across yeah. the dunes. Yeah, well, it's a way to get across the sand. Yeah, the, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that's it's used for for accessibility, yeah. so yeah. you're not. Um, that's what I was thinking. thinking I know it's yeah. Like yeah. No, it's a really good thought. Mm -hmm. It would be more. <laughs> it'd be more temporary and. Yeah. To Alan's point, I think the soils here are a little more challenging and the roots. I think that's going to be like the balancing act is don't impact the trees, protecting roots. That's where you might want a little more of a board, like a little small, like a bog crossing type of right. boardwalk. No, I, I don't like, we're not thinking piles, heel co piles throughout. You know? Once you get the final design, it might be like at the end of the year or in January. What do you think your timeline would be with weekend permit? That's a good question. We haven't gotten there yet. It depends on their workload. Um, Have you dealt with them recently and might have taken a year to get through? Uh, I would not, I would say less than a year. Yeah. I, Cheryl, I think you have. Oh, Cheryl, no, Orange, Orange, yeah, Orange. Cheryl, the ideal situation would be two months. You know, you start kind of pushing them and hopefully within three to six months. Yeah. After two months, um, you visits to the office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would say like I think the good number is eight weeks is what we would hope. Again, it it really depends on workload. And the one thing too on the permitting, we are planning to pre meet with them. So to, uh, that always helps that you can kind of fill them in on the project. So when it comes on in front of them or you know it's brought to their desk, it's not the first time they're seeing it. Um, but we still have a ways to go because we have to finish, you know, the, the the hydrology and think look at our crossings. But yeah, I would say eight eight weeks would be good. Yeah. Hopefully, not more than three months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're hopeful. Um, and then just for the last uh, topic, uh, we really want to know what you guys are excited about. So if uh, I know we've talked about a lot of these and really liking the variation in it. Is there like, um, or you even mentioned you like the wildlife from here? You're excited about the wildlife. Is there a specific spot that you think is great that people should be able to get to? Do you think that river views are important or board watching, bird watching is a good activity? Like, is there something about it? Well, just to be able, for someone who's handicapped, to be able to get out there and get into the forest is, is just so refreshing. I'm so excited when I got the letter. I mean, you know, and Lincoln's a great community. We have uh, ferns out there that 
you don't find other places because of the limestone and things like that. I mean, it, really, it's a perfect spot. And it's you know, when you go by the rivers, you know, the snow will falls and so relaxing you work, you know, it's you know, sometimes I'm out there for three, four days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's hard to find an accessible trail. Yeah. I mean, we there's um RI walks and that tells how easy the path is and and what it has and the parking and, and it's a great site. Well, somebody's keeping them out pretty good right now. I don't know if it's the boys club, but if it's you people over there. I mean, if there's a tree that crosses a path and they and they cut the tree, I mean, they're really spending some time keeping the trails open. I think that's Lauren and her crew, right? Uh, Cheryl. Uh, Cheryl. Volunteers. Volunteers do a lot yeah. of yeah. Sometimes we don't really know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In general, we like to, you know, sometimes we we uh, have volunteer work days and we get a chunk of work done because they're. Okay. Um, I just wanted to volunteer anytime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. This is a little off the um, um, nature okay. part of it, kind of. But I was a little intrigued when somebody asked or somebody mentioned something about the history of what it used to be, and that's to me another thing that I like in woods that you find um, remnants of you know previous. Uh, people being there or what it was used for. And that's something that might be interesting to, you know, to people who can't, you know, just wander all around, but they might be interested in going to a specific place to learn more. And I know I'm sure that there's information and in records of the town about what what used to be there. Is the Blackstone Valley Historical Society on Route 146A? Yep. And like that stone on there, no. Yeah, I'm sure it's for something. sure. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of stone walls back there. Yeah, yeah. one time it must have been farms. farms. Yeah, I was well in the dam too. There was a it was a, a mill of some sort. Yeah. Right? No, they yeah. said it, it was likely um the dam was likely built to hold water up um for reserve for yeah. those down further. So and to keep them, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, so no, yeah, we have talked about in terms in, in, including interpretive yeah, signage right, right. and not yeah. only so not only that period but also pre-colonial because there's yeah. also an opportunity to learn about yeah. the different plant communities or how the land was used prior to um the colonial period so um again the sites that have history like that present some unique opportunities that we yeah. it, there's a timeline history here yeah um, i was thinking some of the places where we go or, or, uh, or. down in little compton and in Tiverton and some of those they just have old stone formations that they tell you about the history of who used to be there before. And right. Or as I was just saying, that one, like, you, it goes back to glaciers, like those stones, and, those erratics yeah, and all those things. Like, it's so it, it's, yeah, those way, there's a lot of, of the, those stones have been there a long, long time. Mm. Um, yeah, did, did anyone else have any other questions? Um, great. Uh, so one other thing we wanted to do just for um, to get a little bit more feedback is we have some images that we're just going to show that go over path material type, boardwalks and crossings, and kind of seating options. And it's just uh, nothing decided, just what you think about them. If they fit or they don't fit, you don't have to have a big reason for liking something or not. But um, I was just going to go through a few images then. And then if you like the images and feel like it fits here, then you put your hand up. If you don't, then you keep your hand down. Does that work? And then same for anyone online. Is there anything online? Um, you use the raise hand option. So at least on my screen, this is where it looks, where you raise your hand if you like it. So I think, and it'll show up on the- Yeah, so, yeah. It, so it shows up as a little raise hand, guns raise hand yeah. too. Um, and we'll be able to see that on our side as well too. So if you, and then you lower your hand if you don't like it. And just keep in mind, these are not things that we're proposing. It's just the way to get a reaction. Yeah. So, so the first one's for pathways. So 
So this one, do you like it or, or if you don't keep your hand you Look up. at that image. Do you like it? Do you like yeah. it? Unanimous. It looks and like. then another oh, one. Mm -hmm. oh, well, wait a minute. I didn't oh. get to see <laughs> on this one. How many? One, two, six. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, two. Well, not only that, if you're in a wheelchair, it's going to be kind of tough to move. One, two, three. Up, up. Mm -hmm. Hands up again. All right. This is a trick question. This is a trick question. Yeah, you guys are paying attention. You think we're drinking? Yeah. <laughs> Some of us are. All right. That's good. Like roads. No hands on that. Nope. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay, and then boardwalks and bridges. Yeah. Really. Was that it? Yeah, yeah that was good. Yeah, I just lost. I moved quick. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 You're confusing both. I know. I thought you were going to Sorry, I <laughs> All right, wait a minute. Some of the big bridges. That's a butterfly pond bridge. Oh. Yeah, I can see it. And I just say something about there's been some that were kind of twisty, turvy. They're pretty, and I mean, I would have no trouble on them, but I'm thinking of a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, those are kind of tall. Tight corners, sure. yeah, that makes sense for like a leaky right now, like but that. they're so, yeah, fine. I mean, they're you know, visually pleasant, but yeah, no, that's fair. That's what we'll be looking for. Like, so this we're looking at material, yeah. how it lays out. If it doesn't make sense, then it's then even so that'd be hard for somebody going to a wheelchair with the placement of the uh, oh, well, exactly. don't get hung up on the placement. Of the <laughs> But don't don't let that taint your vote. Yeah. Good observation. It's to keep cars from going on it. Okay. All right. All right. Oh. 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 <laughs> and then seating. I got I got to change page. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think though that, that having that lip right behind, right with that bang, oh, um, totally. makes for a problem, and you got to pop oh, right in front. Of yeah. The <laughs> yep. Another trick slide. Also, for a lot of these, I couldn't find a good sample of like companion seating. There's some of them. Those would be some of the details. Well, like yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Not very comfortable to sit in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> that, so you got oh, it's accept yeah, that's accessible for, for wheelchair. Yeah. But it's kind of a. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't see this one. Keep your hands up. Mm -hmm. You have to replace those every few years, so. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be good for that city. Yeah. yeah. The heat, the uh, armrest is good if someone needs to push them. Yeah. 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 Okay, and then is there anything else anyone would like to share?
there's also the it's also like, yeah, I, know that yeah. Part. Yeah. I think it's a, it kind of depends on the angle you're at yeah. Yeah. but that definitely looks like he's eating a t-rex eating a tree yeah 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 that's how i yeah yeah such a cool little little spot there and this is probably for a future meeting but um does the new conservancy have like memorial benches like someone can donate or you know um put a plaque on in memory of someone we we have done that as a fundraiser yeah we do um and especially for donations right um, and, and yes and for sure so and that's usually no, <laughs> but usually, I, I had left money to the nature conservancy oh, and stuff, yeah. and I and I just think you know if she would love something like this. Yeah. That's handled by our philanthropy team. We have a okay. special team um, that can help. Yeah. Yeah. If you're interested, I can put you in touch with someone. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is something the nature conservancy conservancy would be interested in, but in sandwich that is, it's very popular. It's mm -hmm. controversial now because they've taken the boardwalk down and replacing it. But they bought they you bought planks. Oh and they engraved oh, yeah. the planks. Yeah. Know. Like a memorial garden. Yeah, or for yeah, yeah, yeah. for anything or it could or you could just buy it like it would say like the Kucher family or in memory of somebody yeah. or if you had a, no, a poet or like a yeah. line. Yeah. So people would buy them and put them down. Like yeah. The yeah. yeah, it's actually it was actually pretty cool. Yeah. I do not know if the Nature Conservancy has been involved in that. I don't, not our chapter, but uh, it's a way just a way to, to generate yeah. money. Right. Yeah. And then, it's interesting when you're out there and you're like <laughs> I, I actually yeah. love it. I, I I moved there after they, they did that. So uh, yeah. yeah. And then the storm just recently wiped it out. So. Yeah. So, okay. so, so I was reading about that. That's very to, controversial. I yes. And I because they're trying to make it ADA accessible yeah. and yeah. I <laughs> they didn't they whoever designed the boardwalk didn't do what we did because they put up they could have showed some images that people probably wouldn't have liked that yeah. they ended up going with. So anyways. Anything else that we missed? So we have this up here. Just as Sarah mentioned, volunteers help quite a bit at the park. If you guys are out there a lot, it's a chance to develop. It's always good when the community is involved with these spaces. So as you're seeing it get developed, which is an important part of all of this, it becomes like the community park. So um, afterwards, uh, you're helping make the trails or it's what you want it to be out there too. And there's one way you all can be involved right off the bat is tell your friends and neighbors to come out to the next meeting, let them know about the project. Um, Cause the more people we get, uh, I think in the long run, it's it'd be a, a better product. Definitely, yeah, I agree. Please forward, you know, you can forward my email address. You can forward any of the information that you've received so far. Um, and if you have any thoughts or comments in the future, just you can email me at my um, email address. <laughs> nice I'd love to hear from you. Right. Yeah. And we also, if you haven't taken it yet, we have the survey online. I'm bring it up. Um, <laughs> the survey online also that goes through some of these questions, but it's like you're saying, if you're, you're driving home, you're like, oh yeah, this one place that I really like, and I want to tell them about and get that right email. Or same thing for anyone you know who didn't attend. This is another way for them to give some input. If you could participate in the survey, that would be fantastic too. And we can provide a link for that survey, so okay. you can take it on your computer, and you do not need your a phone app uh, to. Uh, you can send that up. to all of us who are here. If they send that link, because yes. we can send it out. Yeah, now that yeah. we have, that's a good point. Now that we have yeah. the contact, that's a yes. uh, that's a really good suggestion. We'll send it out to the friends in the shop. Yeah, right. anybody yeah. we're sending out yeah. to. That would be fantastic. We've done some hikes up there. Some yeah, we've done been well, there. at least two or three. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, great. I've got my business card up here if anyone wants to grab it. Just yeah. So in, in, in closing where we started, our first one of our first slides was task one. You can see it's no longer blue. We've now completed. We're pretty much done task one. We have to wrap up the, the hydrology portion of it, but that's very close. We're going to be meeting, I think, next week, hopefully to discuss that. And then just mark down, we don't have a date set yet, but the next time we'd like to meet is probably mid to the end of October is what we're thinking. 
we still need to talk to our client here and mm -hmm. try to pick a date, but that's when we're thinking. So um, kind of make a mental note or let other people know that the next meeting would be um, mid to late October and hope to see you all. And then at that meeting, we would be presenting the conceptual design. So that's an opportunity for you to kind of talk or give your thoughts on where the path is being proposed or if you have any other suggestions. So um, anything else you want to add there? Do you have any um, suggestions on uh, in-person versus Zoom? Did this work well for you to come in person? Obviously, I mean, you're here. <laughs> but um, I mean, maybe a show of hands, would you come in person again? Mm -hmm. You uh, no, no, okay. You would come in person again. Yeah, like, okay. Yeah, no. Would anyone I might come on Zoom next? Someone time. might come on. Okay. Uh, it, just trying to get an idea of what how this worked and how well it worked. Right. And that's another way you you can let your friends and neighbors know that they don't necessarily have to come here. They can participate yeah. on Zoom, which would be great too, because I think yeah. the numbers in person were greater than the numbers on Zoom. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's a little on you. Well, it's always we, um, you never know. One of the benefits of COVID is that we have absolutely, yeah, it's, yeah. And we have the owl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what's helping us here. Yeah. We talked about it for our library. Well, thank you, everybody. I'm going to turn off. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yep. sorry. Oh, thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, that. Um, it's a camera and a oh, microphone. Yeah.